to bring you the good news today of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that he's the only hope that we have to go to heaven and uh, the day will come that you will need to turn to God many people do it maybe on their deathbed but don't, don't wait too long because we're not guaranteed a tomorrow. We have to seek God and he's there. And he'll reveal himself to you if you seek him. Hallelujah. Shall reveal himself to you. So I just encourage you to seek God. Today I have uh, some flyers. Um, my testimony is that I've been to university I studied uh, religions at university and so I've read most of the holy books and strangely most of the world religions today we have uh, speak about Jesus Christ. Not all of them speak of each other but every single religion in the world today actually has something to say about Jesus Christ. In the Hindu Vedas he's described as the saviour of the world who dies on a cross. In the Quran, he prophecies of his own death and resurrection in Surah 19, 15 and 33. I wonder what Imam would actually tell you that, that Jesus Christ prophesied of his own death and resurrection in the Quran. And then we have the Bible-based Christianity where is faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ that saves us? There's many denominations today. How do we know which church to go to? Well, God's simply asking you today to seek Jesus Christ with all your hearts and all your minds and all your strength and he shall reveal himself to you. That God is a loving God. He is a good God. But he also has standards. He also expects us to be able to understand his will, to be able to keep his commandments, and we just can't do that ourselves because we are carnal in nature. Our carnal nature takes over. But if you actually ask Jesus Christ into your hearts, then the Holy Spirit shall come in and abide with you. And it says in the book of Hebrews 8.10 and 10.16, that God shall write his commandments on your hearts and minds. And the Apostle John says, how do we know that we know God if we keep his commandments? And so there's many people today, maybe many Christians today, claiming that they actually know God. If you read the epistle of John, he's asking us, do we keep God's commandments? Now most of us today aren't Christians. Most of us today are living away from the church. Most of us today are just doing whatever we want. But what you've got to consider is that one day you shall face God. One day you shall answer to God. He is our creator and our judge. What's your name? Aki. And so today I'm encouraging you to seek God with all your heart. He is there. These young lads haven't heard anybody preach the gospel before. Have you heard anybody preach before? Aye. Aye. Uh, what's your name? Matthew. Aki. 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 I definitely encourage you to see God today. God loves you. Jesus does love you. Okay, Jesus died for your sin. You know, when I was a teenager, I was just like yourself until my grand died, my grandmother died of cancer and uh, three days before she died she saw a vision of Jesus Christ, she was a Christian and that made me actually seek God for myself that actually made me seek Jesus for myself and within a few days I asked God to send a, someone to explain who Jesus was and that's how I became a Christian okay, at the end of this life if you look at all the people that have died, they've got testimonies. If, if you look at Anton LaVey, who was a Satanist, and he was very, very arrogant, and yet he fell ill, 
and a few days before he died, God showed him where he was going to go. He was going to hell. He was going to hell for eternity. He was going to suffer in the fires of hell. And Anton LaVey at that point really considered if it was worth doing all the evil things that he did. That's from the Church of Satan. And so you get some Christians that when the things happen to us, when bad things happen to us, that's when we're tested. God wants to know if we're going to bless him or we're going to curse him. It's just like what happened to Job. Job was attacked by many different diseases, many different illnesses, and yet Job didn't curse God. Job said that the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. And when the testing had finished and Satan went away from him, the Lord blessed him twice as much as he was before. I don't know what kind of position you are in your life today, but as I say, I've got some experience. I've went to university and studied many different world religions. I've actually done work for the NHS websites and different things. I've written articles about most of the world religions and the fact that Jesus Christ is in each one. Okay? Everyone's got something to say about Jesus Christ. When Jesus was um, with his apostles, he asked his apostles, who do you say that I am? He says, some say a prophet, some say a righteous man. And then the apostle Peter says, I believe that you're the son of the living God and the king of Israel. Okay. And so that was Peter's confession of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. And so when you grow out of your foolishness and you stop doing foolish things, and you act like a man, then you, you, you really consider if there is a God. And he truly does exist today. And as we all know in the Hindu Vedas, it talks about the saviour of the world will die on a cross. Every Hindu knows that. Every single Hindu that studies the Hindu Vedas has read that part of it that the saviour of the world will die on a cross. And I ask you today, who is that speaking about? There is only one man that can fit that description and his name is Jesus Christ. Okay, yes I'm speaking to you, if there's Hindus around here, if you can hear the sound of my voice, Jesus is calling you to a personal relationship with him today. If you're a Christian and you can hear the sound of my voice, do you know that you're going to heaven? Have you been sealed with the Holy Spirit? Have you been baptized with water and of the Holy Ghost? Are you walking in holiness, in righteousness? Okay, that's what we should do if we're Christians. There's too much unrighteousness today in God's church. Okay, and also if you're a, if you're a Muslim within the sound of my voice, and it says, in Surah 19, 15 and 33, Jesus Christ um, thanking God for his birth and for his death and for his resurrection. I wonder which Imam can explain that to you if you're a Muslim. Jesus Christ with his own lips spoke about his death and resurrection in the Quran. I'm not making this up. Okay, it's written right here if you want to read it. I have flyers on it, okay? And so the real question today is not which world empire or world religion is the coolest or the most powerful. Today I'm saying that God is the creator of the universe. God created man. God created all the trees, all the plants, all the animals. God is the creator. Okay? And God is a good God. God is a loving God. It's we who turn him into a bad God and a judgmental God. He's got a right to judge us. He's our creator. But he wants a personal relationship with you through his son, Jesus Christ. The Hebrew, incidentally, his name is Yeshua, the Messiah. It just means deliverer of God. That's what the name Jesus means. And if you... If all of us sin, all of us are sinners and have sin in our lives. And at some point, 
you know, we're going to get tired of that sin, we're going to get sick of it, because in the Bible, sin brings death and judgment, okay? The penalty of sin is death. He wonders why we all die, well it's because of sin. It's sin that brings us to the grave, okay? And then we shall stand in the judgment before God. God is all of our judge. I'm not saying that God isn't my judge because I know Jesus Christ. But what I'm saying is I know the gospel and that Jesus Christ paid the price for my sin. And I trust in his name. I trust in Jesus Christ. And he is my high priest in heaven now. And the epistle John says, if you confess your sin to him, he is faithful to forgive. That's the epistle of John. Do you know Jesus Christ directly? That you can pray to him directly? He awaits on you today. I'm giving you an interpretation of the word of God. Some of you might be Catholics and you might prefer to go to a priest to confess their sin to them. But the Bible doesn't support that. If a saint or a sinner in fact confesses their sin, they become a saint. This is what the Bible says. Look at one of the worst sinners, the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was a murderer. The Apostle Paul in fact killed Christians and even killed his own fellow Jews that confessed Jesus Christ. Okay, he's a bloodthirsty, wicked murderer. Okay, and yet Jesus Christ appeared to him on the road to Damascus and he got saved through faith and his eyes were blinded by the light and he chose to follow his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and that's why we have the Apostle Paul wrote about a quarter of the New Testament okay God used that man so it doesn't matter what sins you've committed God wants to forgive you today God wants a personal relationship with you today that is the gospel Okay, it's not a bunch of religious men telling you to do certain things so as to please God. No, you confess that you're a sinner before God and you ask Jesus Christ into your heart and he shall come and abide with you. This is the good news of the gospel. You don't have to go to hell for your sin. You confess your sin before the Lord Jesus Christ and you change your ways. Because God wants us to change our ways after we confess Him. It's very important what type of lives we lead after we're born again, after we're saved. Again, today, 